Thank you for checking out my video. I really love Hatsune Miku and enjoy sharing some of that dedication by making videos all about her. To improve my content, I decided to launch my own Patreon page, where you can support me if you feel like Miku's magic reached you by watching them, with neat rewards waiting too. Link in the description. Well, that's all, and now enjoy the new video. Hello, guys, it's Kevin from Channel Sanki Miku again. I'm glad you found your way to my newest video. So, one month ago, I started talking about a big passion of mine, a Hatsune Miku live concert. More specifically, I started with Magica Meter 2016, but I'm not finished sharing my passion about this yet. Oh no. Over the next few months I want to talk more about my favorite concerts. So today I will take this opportunity to go back to the very beginning, the one that started in all. Miku no Hii, Kansha Sai, Thanksgiving Day is the one that started something very big. So I hope you will enjoy the next few reviews as well as this one. I am back to talk more about my beloved Hatsune Miku live concerts. After I had a good look at the newest concert to date, Machika Mida 2016, in my last video, I go back to the very start to give my opinion on the beginning of it all. Miku no Hi Kansha Sai Sankyo's Giving Day was the very first real Miku concert that took place back in 2010 in Zep Tokyo, Japan, on March 9th to be more precise. It started something very special indeed. So how does the very first Miku concert open? Well, it starts out with a cut version of Hajime no Oto without any instruments, only Miku's voice. This song is one of the very first Miku songs, so it made sense to start with it, but there's just not much going on. Then it transitions into Project Diva Death, which starts to build up some excitement, since it's a more upbeat song, also accompanied by an intense beat. Late in, the live band is being revealed. Now the real concert begins and Miku is shown for the first time on stage in her full glory. Not much has changed since then, sure, the resolution has improved and with more projectors in recent concerts they can do more, but the core technology has been the same right from the start. There isn't much to be said about the actual song, World is Mine was the right choice for the first song, it gets the crowd excited and is an all time classic. Another very famous song the crowd seems to really care about, Electric Angel. To be honest, I think this song is a bit boring, but it offers a nice dance and solo. Also, one guy really seems to love this song. Sound is just a pleasant song, makes you happy listening to it. It also is the first song of many in the concert with the producer of the song on stage. In general, an amazing feature of some of the first Meek concerts. I have no idea why they stopped doing that eventually. Koisu the vocal that is a typical sounding Osa project song, cheerful and happy. You can really tell only the most hardcore fans attended Miku's first concert. The crowd is really loud and it's nice hearing them sing along at the start. The next song features a really cool start involving audience participation, which is always a good thing. For the first time here in Dear Cocoa Girls, Miku is in a different costume on stage and it's even her cute swimwear. I think that was in fact the only time when she wore that live. Other than that, another song that just brings a smile on your face. The next song is a faster one, includes a cool solo, I like the dance towards the end, so Stargazer was a good choice for the concert. For me, the parts where Miku talks to the audience are really important. I love them a lot. In her first concert, this part wasn't all that great, with her only saying the line Konban wa Hatsune Miku des, followed by a bow. Even her voice sounds kind of bored. Well, they couldn't get everything right for the first concert. The Secret Garden is a more relaxed song that doesn't really excite me all that much, but I always like the parts when the audience is cheering for Miku. In Miracle Painting, Miku changes into a very sexy costume and her moves are pretty nice to look at too. I used to hate this song because of its jazzy nature, but it grew on me over the years. This song is the beginning of a medley segment in the concert where only the most recognizable parts of songs are being played, usually one verse and the chorus. Next in the medley is Innocence, which is just such a sweet song. You can feel Miku is as innocent as an angel just by her lovely voice. I would love to hear a full version of that song one day. Just like Innocence, Hato also features a cool costume and some funny dance moves. The chorus is very catchy, but I think they cut this song too much, even for a medley. Miku Miku Kin Ni Go Chui is a great Neko type song, as I would call it. Cute costume and moves.
You can really tell how popular Poor People was especially at the time. The crowd goes really nuts upon hearing the song. It's just a catchy tune. In general I have to say this medley corner was a good idea to get as many popular songs as possible out of the way as well as costumes. Additionally, the transitions to the next songs are really well made. Sayonara Goodbye is one of my favorite classic songs and I just wish to hear a full version of it instead. To end this medley they continue miracle painting, starting with a long instrumental part giving the great band a place to shine, also featuring the guest Osa project on the keyboard. Miku is dancing while this is going on after which the medley concludes with the chorus of the song. A really good way to end this segment. Right after the medley corner ended, another special part of the concert begins. Since the first Project Diva game was released a year prior, they took this opportunity to open the song Domito Cinderella with a little transition showing the game menu. Surprisingly, the way Miku looks for this and the next few songs is very different, because they used the character design from the very first Diva game. I can understand they wanted to advertise the game for a concert, but they shouldn't have gone with this lower resolution version of Miku. But let's talk about the actual song. Well, I love the song as well as the audience. Only for this version, Miku's expressions are a bit lacking. Oh, also Dodeco is on stage. The producer for Deer is also here. Such a lovely song. Miku sounds like an angel. Well, not like an angel from Gabriel Dropout though. Uh, well, I'm glad this classic got performed live at least once. Back to normal Miku with another medley. Uda Omote Lovers is such a catchy song of course. The dance in this version is a bit lacking, much better in later concerts. Since this is part of a medley, only a portion of the song gets played. Midway through the song, Miku starts to introduce the band. Let's see how they did the first time around. So like I said, Miku does it herself, which is great. She even turns towards the band members, which is nice too. The performances are very cool as well. But Miku herself gets announced by the keyboard player Abe Jun without making a big deal about it, which is a huge negative point. Oh well. The medley continues as they transition into puzzle, starting with the most touching part of the song. Another song I would like to hear in its full version, only with more interesting dance moves then please. Voice is such a nice change of pace, very different kind of song. I really like it, it's such a cool song featuring very sad lyrics, highly recommended to look up this translation. Unfortunately the most unique part of the song isn't shown here, which could almost be called a rap segment. Another guest on stage, even though 1 sixth out of gravity is still in the medley portion, the version shown here is right along. It's a nice tune but gets repetitive after a while. Even so, I love the part with only Miku singing. As usual, Miku sounds gorgeous and since the end sounds kind of improvised, it's a nice way to end the second medley. After a cut in the recording, maybe there was a little break, Luca performs her very first live song ever, Hoshi Zuku Utopia. This song fits her unique voice well, but the crowd reaction can only be called mediocre. No love for Luca in this audience? The solo as well as Luca's dance moves are nice to look at, featuring boob physics already in her first appearance. The crowd seems to wake up for another classic song, Double Ladiat. Everybody can join her dance in the chorus and what do you see there? Ago Aniki on keys going absolutely nuts with his crazy hairstyle. Just be friends, such a famous Luca song, I'm getting so sick of it to be honest. But well, this was the first time live and it made sense. To me this song is very boring, as for so many songs the producer is there on stage, Dixie Flatline. Like I said I think that's amazing, but for some reason they don't really show them a lot on the Blu-ray recording. You could even miss they were there sometimes. I really don't get that, the producer being there is so cool, why do they almost try to hide that to the view of the recording? Now Miku and Luca are on stage, good choice for the first ever duet song. Magnet is a nice song, I only grew a bit tired of it personally. Interesting song choice since it has never been in any Project Diva game to date as well as it's the only time ever live. Alice is a relaxing ballad. The solo is being played by some sort of harmonica by Chun-san. I have no idea why since he still seems to press the keys.
I don't know if it's good pacing to play the next ballad right away, but at least it's a really great song, Anata no Utahime, also the only time live here I believe. Miku tells the story about how she got bored, being happy about the time together with her master and singing for him. Just to make it clear, I am that master. I really can't stress enough how great it is they are using so many different costumes for Miku, this one being special because of Miku's loose hair. Moon is an interesting mix of a song with normal speed but very slow repetitive singing. Sure it's very relaxing, only the dancing can hardly be called that because it's just so static. I especially like the band performance in this one. Well, Miku had a chance to relax in the previous song, now she has to make up for it by singing one of her ultra fast songs. The crowd seems to get pulled into Hatsune Miku no Shoshitsu easily, it's just a good life song. It's a nice chance to demonstrate something a human can probably never sing. Rin is next. After a nice piano intro, the crowd is eager to hear Kyo Din chan live for the very first time. She starts with a really melancholic but yet cool song. Din seems to have three categories of songs. Cool songs like this one, rock songs like Tokyo Teddy Bear or incredibly cute songs like Sweet Magic. Another of these cool songs. Kokoro is one of my absolute favorite classic Din songs. It's so touching, especially towards the end of the song. I love this song because it transitions so perfectly back and forth between a robotic sounding in and one with a more realistic voice, longing for a heart. While I love the song and the lyrics, life is pretty static with not much going on. By the way, starting with this one, for the next few songs the band is gone and instead a DJ accompanies these more techno themed songs. Len wasn't good enough to be performing alone for the first time live apparently, but I actually love that he is being joined by his sister Rin for the only time singing this classic song of his, Miki Katano Cho, making this version special. I especially like Rin's cute pose at the very beginning as well as her dance moves in general. Promise is such an amazing and touching duet of Miku and Din. They dance in unison with their lovely voices. It really brings tears to my eyes hearing this one. Not only because of the song itself, but also because of the tragic death of Sam Free, the producer of the song that also plays alongside the two. May he be at a better place now, hopefully with Miku and Din at his side. After a very short speech of Miku we hear from Y to Y, leaving me in my emotional state of mind. What, you think I'm repeating myself? Maybe so, but how else would I describe a beautiful song like this one? I like how this song builds up from slow singing to the highlight of the song with more instruments enriching the chords. Also nice are the parts where the audience joins small bits to sing alongside Miku. If I had to complain I'd say there might be a few too many ballads in this concert overall. For me Sai Hat is just a mediocre song. Likewise, nothing special is going on with the dance or the costumes. But remember, for me hearing any Miku song is never a waste. It strikes me as weird that Strobe Nights is in fact the only song of the highly popular producer Casey Lifegen for the first concert, because he had been famous right from the start. You can hear Miku's tune by him, he has a very unique style. Just a few months ago I didn't care for this song, but for some reason I came to like it a lot. Unfortunately, with the instruments on stage, it wasn't easy to recreate the sound for this one, making it lose a bit of its impact. They should have used more of the original sound samples from the song. Spicker is a perfect song towards the end of any Miku concert. It just conveys the feeling of being a final song right away. I love this one a lot, especially the chorus and of course, for this version, the part where it rains confetti near the end. Apart from the highlight though, it feels like the crowd lost a bit of its energy near the end of the concert, which is a bit unfortunate. This call for encore is pretty special, it sounds very loud and synced, but of course a big part of this is the audio mix of the recording. The call is just pretty unique with a small shout in between. Near the end they change it up by screaming for more Miku. The first encore song is I Corba, featuring an extremely young looking Dekonina. Kinda interesting how this producer used to mainly make pop songs like this one, when his recent popular songs like Ghost Rule are much heavier songs. Anyway, it is a cute love song as the name suggests and of course I have to say that the part where Miku becomes a bit of a tsundere, calling out Baka several times is the best part of the song. The instrumental isn't perfect in this performance in my opinion.
Well, they definitely chose a perfect song for the very end. Melt is so popular, everybody sings along. On a side note, I personally love this song a lot myself and I can only hope I will hear it live for the first time for Miku's 10th anniversary at Machka Mila this year. The song tells such a nice love story, but the highlight is definitely the memorable chorus. Right when Melt ends, all the producers that were featured in this concert rush on stage, which is certainly a nice touch. What I don't like is how again they seem to forget why the people came in the first place, because of Miku, since there is no good bio or anything special of the sort. It's clear they still had a lot to learn. Then Project Diva Death plays again, you can tell the crowd is satisfied as they call for more and scream together. So how can I conclude this one? For the very first major Miku concert I can definitely say they made a lot of good choices, which was very important. Because think of it, if this one would have been a disaster, we probably would have never seen so many beautiful Miku concerts to follow. A big positive aspect for me is that so many producers of the songs join Miku on stage, such a cool touch. Only silly how this isn't really shown enough on the Blu-ray. The concert features a good variety of a lot of popular Miku songs and stuffing some of these in medleys was a good way to get more of these out of the way, even featuring so many original costumes. The set list is pretty well chosen for the first concert, but it's definitely not one of the set lists that would be part of my personal favorites. Aside from Miku, Luca and Rin also get some nice first performances. Fans of Len, Kaito, Meiko are not so lucky, with Len only being in one song alongside Rin and the other two not appearing at all. The band performance is top notch and the stage design is simple but effective. Obviously they didn't try too much for the first concert ever. One of the few negative aspects is the usage of the character design of Miku from the first D.Va game, which takes you a bit out of the experience. Even for the very first concert, the way Miku looks on stage was great right from the start, with the biggest flaw being almost no interaction between Miku and the audience, neither for the band member introduction nor for other speeches as well as the very end without even a proper goodbye. Interesting how the same issue is pretty similar to what I said about the otherwise almost perfect recent Magica Mida 2016 concert. Other than its small problems, this concert was certainly a great first Miku concert and it is still worth going back to, especially since it features a lot of songs that were only ever performed here. So what did you guys think about this one? I thought it was pretty great, wasn't it? Especially for the very beginning. So as always, I'm very glad you watched this video. If you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up, comment on your opinion, share with your friends and especially subscribe to my channel to never miss a video like that again because I do all kinds of Miku stuff. So as always, I hope you will have a nice Miku day. Until next time and well, that's all. Thank you.